to do seven figures in profit in wholesaling, there, there's multiple ways you can do it. And I can do it all for, through cold calling, all through SMS or all through like direct mail or bandit signs. I just, I want to be able to sleep at night without having a bunch of employees and stuff. I am so excited for today's interview. I have with me a young entrepreneur who is absolutely crushing the game. Um, he's out of Florida. And uh, this guy is no bluff, no fluff, no BS, no nothing. He is just telling it how it is and just putting out just a ton of great content. Man, I started following I started following him like a year ago when he started just putting out content and watching what he's been able to do from then to now is pretty insane. So um, without further ado, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Absolutely. So if you're tuning in live, um, make sure to uh, comment where you're tuning in from and uh, share it. We're going to be providing just an insane amount of value. Zach's going to talk about kind of how he got started and where he's at today. So uh, for people who don't know you, man, like just tell everyone, you know, what you have going on. How, how do you got started in uh, real estate investing? Yeah, man. So a lot of people heard my story and obviously I'm going to give as much value as I can. Uh, but really quickly, my name is Zachary Ginn. I'm a real estate wholesaler out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. I'm currently 21 years old. Basically started real estate wholesaling at the age of 17. Uh, my dad's actually a pretty big wholesaler out in the area and I wanted him to teach me. He basically told me to do it yourself. I uh, basically started wholesaling by myself uh, in high school and made about 100K off of bandit signs, uh, just sticking signs out outside my high school wrestling tournaments. After that, got a full ride scholarship up to college, started virtual wholesaling in from my dorm room uh, in Port St. Lucie. Uh, made probably a little over six figures doing that in about two semesters. Uh, came back home, started wholesaling myself, and uh, me and Rick decided to butt heads together and uh, create the largest real estate wholesaling operation on the Treasure Coast. Uh, right now, we're running over seven figures in profit uh, per year, not just in Port St. Lucie. We do basically all of Florida and some virtual markets, but uh, that's it. I mean, it's... That's what I do. All right, guys, there you have it. So, man, it's just so cool. Like you, you started at such a young age. Um, there had to be some major, like, you know, naysayers, some limiting beliefs when you first got started. Can you can you talk about that? I mean, did you have any limiting beliefs, or were there haters and naysayers that you had to kind of get through to get to where you're at right now? Three. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, haters is a is a quote. I mean, I. I get people messaging me every single day that, that think I'm terrible and I'm a bad person uh, just because the amount of subscribers we have on the YouTube channel. But uh, starting out, I mean, the biggest obstacle is yourself and your limiting beliefs in your mindset. So I didn't have my first person tell me anything bad about me until I started making about six figures a year. And then the local wholesalers that started taking deals away from, they started getting pretty aggressive against me. Uh, I, there was one dude that just, constantly berating me because uh, he was very upset. He was easily making over $100,000 per year in bandit signs. And I decided just to stick more bandit signs in this dude because, I mean, I was 18. I had all the time in the world. I didn't have kids, family, Mary. I had none of that stuff. So uh, he got pretty upset at me. I basically took his only revenue stream. And uh, he's he, he, get, he was the only dude I could say that's a real hater. Uh, yeah. Now, I mean, fast forward today. I mean, I had a guy try to steal a $70,000 wholesale deal for me. Uh, wow. and he had some choice words for me and my company, but, uh, really in, in wholesaling, I don't really care, but, uh, no, not really much haters. Uh, the biggest hater for yourself is going to be your limiting mindset and beliefs saying, Hey, I'm 17. I can't get into wholesaling. Yeah. I mean, the biggest obstacle is you. That's just it, man. And, and that's kind of what my whole reason for mentioning that was, is the fact that so many people, you know, they, they look at what you have going on or they look at, you know, anyone's business who's having success. And it's like, how are they doing that? And um, I credit any of my success to just having the right mindset and then just putting in the work, right? Like you put out yeah. more bandit signs than that guy and therefore you were able to get some deals. So are you still doing bandit signs and what the heck are those if, if anyone who, who's listening doesn't know? Yeah. So yeah. bandit signs are those ugly yellow, we buy houses, cash signs. They worked very well four years ago when I started out in this business Eventually, a fun fact in my county, I stuck so many out 
that they actually basically beefed up. I think they hired like four extra people just for that. And you can't put a sign out in my county without it getting picked up within five minutes because they have so many people that are working on it. So it doesn't work in my county anymore. It used to. I basically, it's like SMS. Why is SMS getting harder? It's because everyone's just found out you make a lot of money and they started doing it like crazy. I did the same thing with SMS I did with bandit signs. I stuck so many bandit signs out and I kind of oversaturated it. I used to send so many SMS text blasts like three years ago. I did like unlimited services, thousands and thousands of texts a day. And eventually everyone started doing it and it became oversaturated. So uh, bandit signs, they don't work too well by me, but there's some certain markets. They still work pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. They still work. And um, it's all about just having multiple things going on at once, right? You can't just rely on one like single marketing channel to get your deals done. So what is like, what, what's working well for you now? It's kind of jump, jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but like as far as marketing, what's, what's working well for you right now? Yeah. So there's a lot of, it's a weird answer. Uh, it's a weird way to answer this, but uh, to do seven figures in profit in wholesaling, there, there's multiple ways you can do it. And I can do it all for, through cold calling, all through SMS or all through like direct mail or bandit signs. I just, I want to be able to sleep at night without having a bunch of employees and stuff. So uh, we keep a very lean operation. It helps us if there's a real estate crash or something, but most of our deals, believe it or not, is through the direct mail right now. Yeah, It's the easiest one to just track the KPIs the, deal, the leads actually flow into the acquisitions manager. They go on the appointment there. We put in Podio. It's a very seamless process. For me to do the, that amount of deal, we do cold calling still. So number one's direct mail, second's SMS, and then third's cold calling, and then probate mailers, more or less if you do it. And then the last one's like just JVing on deals. But we could do it the same amount with cold calling, but I would have to have eight VAs, a constantly like constant management of like eight employees there, and it just, it's a lot. Uh, so we're focusing really much on the direct mail part right now. And okay. we still do the SMS and the cold calling, but the SMS is a lot easier with a VA. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. So, I mean, it, it all works. Um, it's it's great to hear others who are doing direct mail still because it's so funny how things shift, right? Everyone hears texting's hot. So everyone goes to texting. Everyone hears cold calling, same thing. So um, that's fantastic, man. Direct mail, absolutely is working well for us too. So good to hear it's doing well for you too. So are you targeting like niche less than with, with those campaigns or are you pretty much hitting as many folks as you can? Yeah. So the issue with us is Port St. Lucie is a very saturated market on average for a real estate wholesaling deal. I think I was talking to you before this about one deal I was doing a little crazier one on that specific deal. It's the average one we do. Our acquisitions guy runs out there he has to compete with seven other wholesalers. This guy had four other appointments lined up. He talked to three other guys, cold calls constantly, text out the wazoo. Like there's just, Port St. Lucie only has 200,000 people, the population. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of like wholesalers here. So you got to deal with like eight, eight wholesalers, really every single appointment. So uh, through direct mail, we just hit them all. Yeah. I basically got equity. We, we hit you with it. And that's kind of what we do around the whole Treasure Coast area. But uh, to answer your question there is we're really targeting basically high equity on the direct mail and then very niche lists on the other stuff. So uh, we still do direct mail on the eviction list, water shutoff list, credit card debt lists, and we'll SMS text blast, text blast or cold call like fire damage properties. Uh, we love code violations. And uh, utilities list is a little weird right now for Port St. Lucie, but uh, we hit the niche, niche ones hard. We love them. Yeah. Did you hear that, guys? Uh, Zach's just telling you what marketing list he's using. So don't go to St. Port Lucy because there's enough wholesalers there already, right? But um, do it. these are practical things mind. that everyone can do. If, if you're interested in getting into real estate wholesaling, this is this is gold nuggets right here. So um, thank you for sharing that, Zach. I appreciate that. And then yeah, the, the title of this is how to how to you know scale from pretty much you know being 17 to where you're at today with your dad in the, in the company. And so can you just kind of give people an idea of what it looks like currently, what your, what your operation looks like, but also, you know, what that looked like from just going from pretty much bandit signs to then doing as many deals as you guys are currently doing today? Yeah. So basically I was like the acquisitions manager like two years ago. Uh, we started delegating about really when the YouTube channel started. So maybe 18 months ago, more or less. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but basically the operation is, I mean, Rick's not in the operation anymore. Uh, he, he's not in it. And I'm basically in it five, seven hours a week. And then I have the whole team do, do basically everything. I mean, I have to get the A-OK. -okay. I still underwrite the deals before we go close on them. But really, it's it's not that crazy big of a business. Like we just, yeah. the, I'll give Rick the rundown every week for like an hour of what's going on. Hey, we bought three houses. We sold these. Here's a $40,000 deal. We did like a $10,000 wholesale. And because he just, he just loves wholesaling like me. So he doesn't need to know. I could get every quarter and just tell him, but he just likes to know. Uh, yeah. So he's really focused on basically just doing content for the people. Uh, Semi-retired, I guess. And then me, I mean, not that much into it, but uh, yeah, I just make sure the operation's running. I technically see CEO, but I mean, I just make sure the operation's going, make sure the marketing list is done, make sure the acquisitions people are nice and smooth. Sometimes there's a uh, cog in the wheel, more or less, of the whole conveyor mm -hmm. belt. I got to go uh, out and fix the problem. But And then the dispo side, we do a lot of wholetailing. Uh, so we have the realtors basically deal with that most of the time. And that's basically it. I mean, it, it's not a complicated business model. And I, I could have done the whole you know, super scaled up thing. But with a population at most in a market of 500,000, you just really can't. Yeah. No, it's it's so true. It's like, it's so straightforward. But when you, you know, when you hear the the checks and stuff like that, it's like, how is it so simple? But really, it's you're doing the marketing. There's an acquisition. You have probably some VAs, I would imagine, or no? Oh yeah, yeah. You have VAs. Okay, so you have acquisitions and the dispositions. You're buying the property and then you're just putting them back on the market. So you're having the real estate agent do that. Do you guys um, have a dispositions agent at all, or do any of that yourself? Yeah. Well, I mean, our acquisitions, acquisitions manager is a realtor. Rick owns a real estate brokerage. So yeah, we basically have our pickings at whoever we really want. Nice. Uh, I mean, we technically have one that's kind of exclusive with us. We get the best rates possible, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess technically. Okay, sweet. So um, I try to talk about a deal deep dive every time. So is there a deal that you've done in the last, let's just say, you know, in 2021, that was a, you know, smoking hot deal or just a, a sweet deal that, that you want to talk about? Yeah, I'll tell you two deals. One that's going to get you excited and one that's going to tell you the truth. So okay. uh, one deal on my YouTube channel I posted, we did my first $100,000 uh, deal. It was the first one I ever did. I was super excited. Uh, it took me, I had the YouTube channel for 18 months. I told everyone I'm ready for the 18, I'm ready for the hundred, like six figure deal. Uh, yep. I finally got that. It was insane. It was a crazy probate situation. It, just, it wasn't even a probate. Technical was a probate, but the, the, it was a weird one. So more or less how the deal broke down is the guy, unfortunately, had to move out of the house because uh, he had some mental problems. And then we had to deal with the actual, uh, really the son, but like he wasn't the son, but like he was adopted. But it, it was a crazy situation. And the property was so decrepit that the guy was just living in such a bad place that it, it was bad. I did the whole full before and after photos of it. I think there was rat feces everywhere. I mean, it, it was bad. Squatters were in there. The roof was all messed up. The pool is basically dark, dark green. And the property is ready to get demolished. And it was a huge problem. There's liens everywhere. They're going to lose the property. And we actually bought it for cash. We actually ned the guy a lot more money. And then the one guy was living there for free because he was taking advantage of the, it was, you are paid on the problem that you get. So if there's a huge problem on the, on the deal, you get paid a lot more. If there's a small problem. You don't get paid a lot. So there's a huge, massive problem. with This one had to get sold within basically like five days. And we, and we did it pretty easy. We got the money wired through. We got the funds made about hundred K on that one only spent like 10 grand on the flip. And it was, it was awesome. But it was a wow. lot of headaches, uh, I, I would say. And a lot of stuff I can't really tell about on this, but uh, a lot of headaches. Uh, so that was a great one. That's a cool one. It's all sexy. But if I was my 18-year-old self, I definitely could have not got that deal done myself. So uh, it just comes yeah. with experience. You're able to do that. The next deal, though, that's a lot more- Hey, one more second. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You said a, a six-figure deal. How how much did it net you guys? It was like 102000 Oh, like so was, you, yeah, you just it was on the cusp. It. Yeah, I yeah. just cleared it. But it was it was like a 
it sold for like 280. Like it wasn't like I bought this thing for 1 million and sold it for 1.2. Like it was, right. the margins are pretty good. Like you make a hundred K on like a $300,000 house. That's more impressive than doing like buying something for a million and selling it for 1.4. So right. that's what it got. So the average price point is 200,000 in Port St. Lucie. That, so that's why it, it's very hard for me to get a six figure deal. We can do more volume, but um, that was a big accomplishment of me. Uh, but the real deal that's a lot more practical is our acquisitions manager dealt with this crazy, crazy seller uh, that just, there's so many situations with the cash buy. It was such a bad property. I refused to close on it. That's how bad it was. Those super thin margins. And my acquisitions manager kept telling me like, I, this, the price is too high. I'm like, the price is too high. The seller's refusing to go down on anything. There's 10 other wholesalers out this person because they listed it for sale by owner. And I was like, you know what? Just lock it up. Like, screw it. I'll find a cash buyer. I got, I'll find someone. It needed a lot of work. Termite damage, the whole thing. A wood frame house in Port St. Lucie, especially on the, by the beach is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it needed basically be torn down. I had that video too, but it was, it, literally there was no roof. There's no roof in Florida. It, this is a Florida house. There's no roof. The sun's <laughs> sun, you can see it from the kitchen. It's bad. Wow. So I made, after all in all, it, our acquisition, acquisitions manager had, kept going to visit the lady like seven times. It was a crazy situation. We ended up netting $5,000. Yeah. And he spent probably 40 hours on that deal. Yeah. It was just such a tough one. But the, the big lesson on there is sometimes your hardest deals and the ones you have to spend the most energy on are just the tiniest ones. Yeah. Uh, and it's bad. But uh, we ended up making five. It was not the best situation. But uh, we wanted to help the seller out. So that's a little more realistic one uh, for the average person. Yeah, there we go. So, so we got to set the expectations, right? You know, this is, this is no fluff, no BS, but um, couldn't agree more, man, dude. I just closed on a $3,000 wholesale in Springfield, Missouri today. And it was a headache. Like, yeah, okay. those small deals, man. They're, they're brutal. So cool. Thank you for sharing. Congrats on the six figure deal. That's like, that's on the bucket list. We've done some over $50,000 deals, but when you're in these markets where the price point's like 200 to 300,000, it definitely um, makes it a little bit more challenging to find those deals for sure. So, um, all right. So then you mentioned doing outside of your market. So virtual wholesaling, um, what does that look like? Do you just, again, cast a wide net and then when the lead comes in, you, you capitalize on it? And you have somebody to go look at, or what's that kind of look like for people who aren't familiar with that? Yeah, so we have very, very specific markets that we do very well in virtual wholesaling. Uh, we don't do any direct mail, really. We do a lot of SMS and cold calling with them. Uh, I do a lot of testing. So Port St. Lucie, I know like the back of my hand. I know it works perfectly there. When I come to a virtual market, I have to figure out what's going to work. It's cold calling you know, a fire damage list going to do really well, or is SMS blasting a code violation list? I, every marketing channel or niche you could even think of, I'll test it out in that virtual market. I'll spend tens of thousands of dollars doing it. And then I'll figure out like, hey, the arbitrage on my money here is like a divorce list on SMS text blasting. Just in this market, I don't know why, it just hits. I, I, I don't know, I don't know why, but like one niche list in a certain virtual market will just hit. I don't know why, it just will. And then I go all in on that one and it, it they're killer. Uh, so what we do, we'll cold call and get the lead. We'll get it locked up. Usually we use dot loop. Everyone uses DocuSign, but we just use dot loop because kind of, I already have the account with the brokerage and we'll just get the virtual contract signed, bring a cash buyer through. What we like to do is just basically have like a runner, a boots on the ground guy, take pictures. We love putting lock boxes on there because it makes the situation so much easier, but sometimes we can't, we'll just bring a cash buyer through. And we'll just wholesale it. Uh, they're not the sexy forty thousand dollars deals I usually do here in like my local market. They're closer to ten to fifteen, uh, but we do more volume on them. But the best yeah. ROI we found is in our local market. Still, we just can't beat that. Uh, but virtual, uh, they're still pretty good. Yeah, no, that's great. I think a lot of folks just kind of overthink it as far as the virtual aspect goes. It's really the same exact thing. You're getting the property under contract. You're doing the inspection, and I think the hardest thing that I've found is the disposition side when you don't have all of those contacts, maybe like you do in your, your home market, but um, still, still making money. So that's really all that matters. So cool, man. And then um, let's see here. 
Does anybody have any questions, by the way, for Zach as we're as we're going here? We're going to have a Q&A at the end, but does anybody have any questions that you're wondering about? Because I know um, virtual wholesaling is kind of the, the being word right now in this in this industry. It seems like, you know, everyone's talking about it and, and that kind of thing. But um, so Dude, what's up? cold calling used to be the hottest thing like two years ago. It just. Yeah. You get you get influencers telling you to do a certain thing. Everyone's saying we're doing virtual now. I, I remember last year the biggest thing was like systems and scaling and having huge cold calling like people in a big office. It's shifting now. Like it's just every year there's a new it thing in wholesaling. Um, I'm curious what the next thing is going to be. I know direct mail is going to be someone. Someone's going to start popping that off next. But um, it always switches, man. It was cold calling, SMS. Now it's virtual. I just, I'm curious to see what's the next one where the oversaturation is going to be. Yeah. What's, what's the next hot, hot being buzzword, right? I think uh, a lot of the bigger companies, it seems like they're probably still doing direct mail, but those are the guys who aren't as maybe loud about it as maybe we are about it. And just other people out there, um, Brandon Lopez asked, and you, you already said this, he asked, you know, what's, what's your team look like? Uh, I, know, I know you already said this is kind of going to repeat itself, but let's uh, answer his question there. Yeah, so basically we have VAs pulling marketing lists for us. My favorite marketing list is probates and it's way too time intensive for me to do, but the ROI is worth it where I'll actually hire a VA for five bucks an hour to go pull that list for me, pull the local code violation lists. The secret for us is like the code violation. Some people like sell that info. We get it straight from the county because we want to get that data before every other wholesaler because we're a very saturated market. Same thing with probates. We don't buy them. We get them straight from the source. Like right when the probate hits, like that day, it's already getting pulled for me. And it's like in a Google uh, Drive. So everything's updated pretty quick and easy. We'll skip trace that, cold call it, send some mail out to it uh, from their acquisitions person. Most of the time they're answering the postcards live and they'll put everything in the podio for us and go out in the appointments. Uh, what I can do pretty cool with the Podio is I did a huge guide. It's like my top video I've ever done, but I did like a Podio guide. Uh, we can do is their little appointments feature I have on there. You just click it. I could see all the appointments he has to go on the day. If I have to help him out with something nutty, uh, I'll do it. But uh, yeah, that's it. And then we got the disposition side of it. It's really not that complicated. We have a huge list of cash buyers, but 80% of all of our deals are wholetailed. So it's really not that complicated. And yeah, that's it. That's, my, that's what my team looks like. Beautiful. Thank you. So whole, wholetailing, like that is, that's working right now in this market. What, uh, what would you say to somebody who's like, well, I don't know how to fund all of these deals that, that, that I want to buy. Like I, I don't have the capital to do it. What do you, what do you recommend for somebody like that? Yeah. I mean, I say to the same, I say to people who want to scale up and hire VAs, make sure you at least make a hundred thousand dollars per year in real estate wholesaling create that base and start building up. Because if your base is terrible, like you start jumping into flipping and you don't get no, like focus on one thing first because you'll be all over the place. Same thing, focus on one marketing channel, then build the next one and then build the next one. Just get progressively better every single day. Don't do a million things at a time because it's going to suck all your energy away. So make sure you get that base of wholesaling. Once you get that, you know, like, okay, now I want to start turning my 15, $20,000 wholesale fees into $30,000 ones. What you start doing from there is, Hopefully you're making hundred K a year. You have some funds where you got to start closing on those deals. You could get debt and at, like from there, I mean, there's plenty of private money guys. You can do it. I just think you should prove yourself before you get private money to show, Hey, look, I'm making about $200,000 per year in profit and wholesale fees, Mr. Private money guy. What I wanted to do is start flipping them myself. The problem is I'm, tw I'm 21. When I was 20, 19 years old, I can go. The private money guy is going to be like, no, so, like you're, I'm not giving a teenager like a million dollars, but if you show yeah. them your business is actually making a lot of money, like, okay, this guy's legit. I could, that's pretty secure. Let me actually give him some money. Uh, so that's what I'd recommend. Uh, I always do it from a young person's perspective uh, because a private money guy, even a 21 year old kid right now that hasn't done any wholesale deals, she's, they're going to deny you. Uh, yeah. So make sure you basically get that business running up and uh, you'll get the private money from there. Start flipping them and you'll make more profits. Yeah, man, that's great advice. Cameron says good advice. Brandon, Brandon says uh, building the foundation is key. That's one hundred percent true. You got to have the foundation first. And I, I saw somebody post in a group today that 
who who here's you know doing something besides wholesaling and the first thing that i thought of is everyone should be running a wholesale business because then you can cherry pick some of the best deals to be able to then eventually take down yourself and so you know bank relationships private money there's so much money out there guys if you find a good deal um that you can make a fifty thousand dollar profit on versus a 10 i mean it's almost a no-brainer but you have to start somewhere and building that foundation is the key um brandon says what's your overhead for marketing payroll softwares that kind of stuff yeah so our payroll is percentage basis i mean what is it i mean a va five bucks an hour you're working three hours a day times two, 30 a day, you work 265. I mean, the VAs are less than 10 grand a year. I mean, it's, but the marketing pays for itself. Uh, we'll pay our acquisitions person a certain percentage. It's below it's below 20%, but it's not like too low. And then based on marketing, we'll we'll be about in the five figures in marketing. Uh, it's not it's not crazy, like it's less than 30k. Like we, we keep a very, very lean operation on purpose. Uh, so our postcards are sent to the best use possible. Uh, but yeah, we keep it lean. Like we're not, I, I don't really have crazy offices or anything like that. Like we just, w when a situation strikes, uh, we'll, we'll be pretty good uh, in, a, in a crash. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what our overhead looks like. It's it's not bad, man. I was, I'm really surprised to hear like I understand you don't have the office, but five figures like that is impressive to stay under a hundred thousand dollars in marketing expenses when you're doing that kind of volume as far as like revenue goes. Like most wholesalers are running such a such an operation that it's like you know four four to five x return, and their marketing expenses are overhead. And I mean, even for us, like our marketing expenses have gotten so high because we spend a lot of money online. So you're doing these more niche, more focused, hyper-focused lists to save you some money versus just, you know, spending 10,000 a month on Google ads, let's say. Yeah. Because there's people who, you know, who do that as well. Cool. Man, that's- I like sleep, man. Awesome. I like sleeping at night. So that's yeah. kind of why we do it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you hear these guys who have fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a month overhead. Is that- what you mean by not sleeping at night is potentially and you got you got to worry about that. the big office like you sign a lease for two years what if a crash happens you like you could be in big big trouble yeah uh, you got all these employees like i don't be the guy that wants to fire six people that have kids to feed i'm i, I don't like that um i know if a market crashes my acquisitions person will probably make more money because we'll, we'll wholesale a bunch of creative finance deals we'll we got the cash release options subject to like uh, we're pretty much set up for whatever happens. And the best part is when there's so many like saturate, it's such a saturated market in real estate wholesaling right now. When a crash happens, all those people scurry away. Yeah. And I'm the only person who's got the cash, the funds in the bank account ready to just swoop up and attack all those deals. We'll, we'll make more money on a crash than right now. And we're making pretty yep. good money right now. So uh, no, I, I like sleeping at night. Yeah, no, that's cool. So that's a that's a good point. Like you're playing the long game. You're not just playing. Hey, I'm gonna make a bunch of money fast. Like this is a long term business. And what that that brings up a good point is like, what does the future hold for you then? Like, are you looking at other investment opportunities? I know you're always looking at what you have coming into the wholesale business, but what's the big you know kind of long term look like for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm 21 years old, so. I don't know what the future will hold for me forever, but uh, God willing, I've been in real estate my whole life. I love every facet of like real estate in general. Uh, so really what I want to do is just buy more property. You know, I, I live very poor, if that makes sense. Like I just invest everything I got. Obviously I live for essentials and stuff, but uh, yeah. really just getting that net worth up and uh, just creating a great business that I like. Uh, the one thing I do value that, I don't think a lot of wholesalers talk about is time freedom. I think time freedom is the most important part for me. I can do it. I mean, we're talking here on a Friday. Like I, I can do whatever I want. Like if someone wants to go hang out with me, a friend at like 2 PM, I can go do it. I'm not stuck. Uh, a lot of people get into wholesaling, they leave a job and it turns into a job. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, so that's the reason I'm not looking to do a crazy scaling up where I'm stuck in an office for 10 hours a day, uh, managing a big team. I'd rather 
do it from home, make seven figures and really help people out. Uh, so yeah. uh, the future is we'll, we'll probably scale up a little more. Uh, we're just enough where I can keep the amount of hours I work now because it's, it's pretty low and I'm pretty happy doing it. Uh, but that's really it. Try to delegate a little more and help as many people as I can. I love it, man. Guys, if you don't know Zach or if you don't follow him on his YouTube channel, he is an absolute go-giver. Um, he, he gives away everything. Um, he, he's the guy who's taken the gurus who charge the 25000 out of business. So uh, give this guy some love. You know, Like his page. Uh, follow him on YouTube. And um, I guess where can people learn more about what you have going on too, Zach? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the best place to find me is on Facebook, Wholesaling Houses for Real. It's the largest wholesaling mastermind in the country, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can hop on there. I do zoom every Friday on there and I post all my content on there too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the best place to find me right now. I would, I would say. Sweet. Yeah. So don't you have a group call coming up? Like where you just pretty much mastermind with folks today, later today, if anybody's interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Six thirty. Okay. So yeah, if anybody's interested in that, make sure to go, uh, join wholesale, so wholesaling houses for real. Right. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, the group has blown up. What would you start it like a few months ago or two months ago? Started November and it, it's like 6,400 or something like crazy right now. It's growing more than any social media thing I've ever done. It's yeah. kind of crazy. It's, but it's a real mastermind. Like it's a $10,000 mastermind. I just do it for free. Make no money from it. Like I, I just not who I am. Like do I have a Rolex on me? Like I drive a regular truck. Like I, 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 I want to keep myself as grounded as possible because I used to be that guy with 300 bucks in my bank account. And uh, I try to bring that into that little mastermind I do. Now it's not little anymore, but uh, yeah, that's what it, I love the Facebook group. Uh, every wholesaling Facebook group you ever find, it's always one guy pushing a course down your throat and yeah. just constantly trying to sell you on stuff. There's no selling. There's gurus that come in every time. I, I block them out. A lot, of, a lot of wholesaling guys don't like me uh, because of it. And that's why I got some guru haters on me. But uh, yeah. yeah, man, if you sell it all in there, I just block you. Like, I don't care. Yeah. You're blocked for life too. So uh, a lot of people appreciate that. I think that's why it's grown. I was going to say, people appreciate it. The respect is important from the real ones, the people who actually can appreciate what you're doing. So, dude, you're doing awesome. Keep up the great work there. And um, I always like to ask because self-development has been a huge part of my journey about a book. Do you have a business book or any book that you would recommend that you would help say contributed to your success? Yeah. Um, I always go back to this one, Awaken the Giant Within, Tony Robbins. Nice. Absolutely. Oh, love that book. Uh, the Go-Giver is another really good one. I don't physically have it on me. Uh, that influenced a lot of the stuff I do. So I don't yeah. charge for anything. Um, I just give and it's helped me out so much. Like just giving, just giving free value and content has given me over a hundred thousand dollars this year in like JV deals. So the more I give, the more I receive. So I try to yeah. give as much as possible and I expect nothing in return either. And I don't want anything in return. Uh, but I know by helping people out, it in turns will help me. Yeah. 100%. No, that's, that's incredible, dude. I love it. And then I already asked you where people can learn more about you. Um, man, I, I, I respect your time. I really appreciate you coming on, Zach. Um, does anybody have any last questions before before we get out of here today? Dude, if I get you on my podcast, if I answer every single question on that, it would be like a four-hour thing. Yeah, it's, no. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but, I was uh, going to say. You, uh, questions out. Thank you, Brandon. Dude, you have, you have a great following. Um, you're killing it. And by the way, we're in, we're in the Florida market virtually now. And so Sweet. we will probably be hitting you up soon. Uh, Orlando, particularly. Ooh, nice. Yeah. A little saturated, it's, but uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty insane. We have a deal under contract right now, and it's uh, Winter Garden, which is just a suburb over there. It's a probate deal. Suburbs are key. Yeah, yeah. Find out where the least amount of competition is, but um, yeah, man. So we're we're marketing to the whole state. So eventually, I'm sure we'll come across the deal, St. Port Lucie area, and we don't have any contacts there. So 
guess who I'll be contacting. So sweet man, go contact yeah. me. Can't yeah, yeah, awesome dude. Well, thank you again, Zach. Um, where can uh, what's one last thought that people uh, you'd like to leave leave these folks with today? Yeah, I always go on someone's podcast. I say the same thing, so I'm a broken record, but um, I, I truly believe it is. Uh, you only have one life. Decide how you want to live it. Um, I think, in my personal opinion, life's too short to do stuff you don't want to do. Uh, so if you're watching this, you haven't done any real estate wholesaling deals or you want to start making 100K, a million a year, uh, just remember your why. Uh, but also remember that you only got one life. So uh, your life is worth it to go out there and chase the stuff uh, that you want to live it. Um, it's better to live with no regrets uh, and try wholesaling than go out there and be under deathbed and say, why did I never try that? Why did I work a nine to five job the rest of my life? Um, it will completely change your life. But uh, the last thing I'd say is action is the biggest thing you can take right now. Be just, just act, like go. Like don't think about it half the time uh, in, in wholesaling. You just got to start. That's the biggest step. And uh, be patient. Don't expect to make a million dollars your first year, but uh, you get 1% better every day. You get 365% better. That's three extra returns. Uh, and that just compounds like crazy. But uh, yeah, guys, I believe in you. Uh, just get the action going and you will become successful. Dude, that's that's the best advice I've ever heard, honestly. Dude, it's so true. So uh, thanks again, man. Make sure to follow Zach on YouTube. Follow his uh, Wholesaling Houses for Real. He's doing some amazing things, guys, and giving away free content every day. So um, thanks again, Zach. And uh, until next time. We'll see you guys later. Thanks, guys.